My name is Mary Lloyd Ireland. I practice at the University of Kentucky in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm going to share some cases that I've seen. This is conditions that aren't what they seem. Knee, soft tissue disorders. These are knees that come in with swelling and pain, but no specific injury. Insidious in onset. This is a 12-year-old soccer athlete, female from Honduras, who had had severe swelling in her left knee for two years. She didn't remember any injury. They had come to the United States for treatment. This is her MRI scan, a pretty significant MRI scan. Look at the suprapatellar effusion. And this shows how high up the suprapatellar pouch goes, almost a third of the way proximal on her thigh, her femur. Pifiso plates are closing, but this is all this diffuse swelling, swelling everywhere basically, swelling posteriorly, swelling up here in the distal femur posteriorly. And the classic appearance that this is of pigmented villanodular synovitis. So the synovium has fronds and is abnormal. And her diagnosis, we felt, was PVNS. This is her exam under anesthesia, putting the arthroscope in laterally. You can see what a huge effusion she has. I like to milk the effusion down to better quantify it. So she's had a huge effusion for quite some time. With these, sometime we have to put the leg holder a little more superior because we have to make accessory portals to do the complete synovectomy. This is the classic fluid that comes out in a PVNS patient. Orange bloody fluid, but thinner. It's not truly a hemarthrosis. Classic appearance of the PVNS, hemosiderin has to be in the histologic diagnosis, but synovitis basically everywhere. You can see how extensive the synovitis is on this video. I used a shaver and burner unit that was one unit so I could control the bleeding and minimize the amount of passes going in and out of the knee. Anywhere there's synovium, basically the PVNS proliferates. Did end up using a drain on her. And then this is this burner electrocoag unit that you can use in addition to the shaving. This is the PVNS coming over the lateral meniscus, the super aspect of the lateral meniscus. I did use accessory portals, a posterior medial portal, and a suprapatellar portals to remove as extensively all of the synovium that I could see that was abnormal. This is a snapshot of what was done. You can see the extensive PVNS basically everywhere in the notch, crawling over the meniscus and an extensive synovectomy is done for this local PVNS. If there is a recurrence, other adjunct forms of therapy are needed. This is a 42-year-old who had left knee swelling, insidious and onset. This MRI scan shows a little better this classic formation of synovium consistent with pigmented villanodular synovitis. Again, no injury, he just had swelling. So this is where his uh, um, synovium shows the classic PVNS appearance. A P view. And these are his classic arthroscopic appearance of his PVNS. Again, do a synovectomy, control the bleeding. And this is the classic hemosiderin laden synovium. A 
A curette can also be used to remove some of the synovium. Accessory portals are oftentimes necessary to reach all the synovium about the knee. We can also have soft tissue lesions occur around the knee, such as a ganglion. Anywhere there's synovium or tendons, a ganglion can occur. This was a ganglion that bothered somebody posterior medially. He had had a previous meniscus repair with a fast fix device and that basically is what caused the ganglion to occur. At this point the pledget was made out of plastic and was pushed through the capsule and then there was a local reaction. Usually these don't cause symptoms but if they do cause symptoms excision of this ganglion or sometimes it'll be bursal tissue and the implant should be done, particularly if it's non-absorbable. This patient was involved in a motor vehicle accident. Shit, I don't know if I'll ever get it right. Let's try third time's a charm. This young female was involved in a motorcycle accident, sustaining a knee injury that was not ligamentous. She did undergo arthroscopy and debridement of the patella, not by me. You can see her portals. Her knee doesn't look particularly swollen, but she developed regional pain syndrome after her injury and arthroscopy, which was done just after her accident. See how red her leg is. This is the typical appearance of a regional pain syndrome. Pain was out of proportion to what you would think it would be and she ended up having sympathetic blocks and this did help her leg but it was never normal. Be well, beware patellar pain, motorcycle accidents and early intervention with arthroscopy. Explain all particular all complications that can occur to the patient including regional pain syndrome. I hope these cases will make you think about certain conditions that you may not have thought about before. Remember, you may not have seen it, but it has seen you.